a lot of things happened in the last yeah, year, two years. Um, and then, yeah, the company grew a lot exponentially, but also the tech team and I mean, the goal of Tulin is to become like a leading tech company. Um, so in numbers, I mean, we were concentrating on like the amount of people that we got at Tulin as a whole, but now also like only the tech team. September um, 2018, 14 people up until 54, September and then 90, as we just said, for the end of, um, of this year. Um, so basically, we just like really kicked off uh, that part of the company. We have a, kind of like a unique business model where like, yeah, we're 300 people right now or a bit more, uh, a bit less. But a lot of people are like on the sales team because we basically create like personalized trip rights so, um, um, for our customers. But we're ramping up uh, the engineering team. Um, with this, uh, not also only tech, but like you suddenly see all our different uh, areas like marketing, sales, um, UX design, um, and having all these new people coming in, these new, uh, this new capacity of like building new amazing projects, um, start emerging new requests. So people coming to see, uh, I want to see like this type, these type of numbers, like I'm interested in like um, this business value uh, and so on. Um, so naturally, um, kind of like have the feeling that we needed to come up with a new team or a new like um, data culture at Tourlane uh, with all of these new people um, and stakeholders that come uh, to see many people in the company saying like, all right, I, I see maybe like a low hanging fruit in that topic right now. So this started like since a year to really, really grow um, um, at Tourlane. Um, our focus, as I just mentioned, create tailored down um, travel suggestions for our customers. Uh, and this is where we started thinking about how data can support that um, to really make the best suggestion for, for everyone. Um, to ensure that our customer have the best experience prior to the trip, during the trip and after. Um, which markets we should open, uh, how our mar destination um, going uh, and so on. Um, so yeah, that, that's when we reached that point. What is the importance of, to uh, of data at Tourlane? How does it fit in our structure? Um, the structure that we just mentioned about like the different teams, the different areas, um, how we actually grew um, since, since two years. Um, where do we want to go with this? How does it fit um, into, into our business model? Um, and yeah, so th these are pretty much a question that we started asking ourselves and how we can move, uh, move on from there. Um, one quote from Tim O'Reilly, maybe some of you know him, like kind of supports our idea, uh, which means like, one of his quotes was, we're entering a world in which data may be more important than software. Maybe some product people won't like me saying this, um, but it's actually true. And uh, for, for, for some part of it, um, the exact thing that you can get out of good, um, maintain like a quality data, like it's not just about like extracting everything. And then after that, you just start looking at things and make bad assumptions. But if you have like a strong focus on it and, every, and you, you share as much as data as possible across your whole organization, um, there is definitely a big impact that you can, that you can have here um, by, by analyzing uh, many, many things. Um, the impact of growth as a company, as a whole, uh, at Tourlane on data, um, as I mentioned, having new teams, bigger teams, new people with different backgrounds, new experiences, brought up um, new vision. Um, and everyone, I mean, Tourlane is a really OKR focused company um, and then at that point sorry um, at that point we started seeing new KPIs emerging um, new 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 field that we want to wanted to explore um, so so the amount of like uh, how various what different uh, the KPI were um, really grew um, and we really want to measure the impact of each change across the whole funnel, basically from the lead conversion to the end of the booking and afterwards also. Um, it was very important for us to be able to measure this for the business. Um, so yeah, that growth has a, had a huge impact on like the, the diversity of all KPIs that we had to track. And at, th at this point, you tell yourself, okay, I need to focus on new areas, explore new data sources, for example. Um, so this leads us to some changes that we had to make um, and many different topics that we'll talk about uh, after realizing all of this and, and, and having a, such a growth uh, in the company. First, as Francesca mentioned, new team. Um, so that was around, let's say, let's say kickoff of 2019 that we started realizing 
For example, we had previously like a data team inside Torrent that was just shared amongst some people from different teams. But then you, when you start doing this like as a squad team or something, like uh, no one is really actually, I don't know, delivering something at the end because you need a, a team that has this, its own KPI and people that work for it um, every day. Um, and you need advocates for a new data culture. So yes, you can start saying like data is important, like we, we have a clear goal for this, for this, there could be a result in that path. But if there's actually no one supporting that, uh, it's going to be very difficult. Um, and we wanted to have a central team um, in the middle of our, our, our structure that could um, support this. It's not just like a vertical team, but also very horizontal. So being involved in like everything that the agent area does, the customer and supply, if you have if you want to know more about these area, I can tell you later, but it's not super the focus of this right now. But uh, basically, it was important for us to have a central, um, central component of our, uh, of our structure. And basically, how we wanted to structure that team, very well balanced in between engineering analysts and uh, data scientists, um, very like uh, having an overlap in skill set, uh, very cross-functional. Uh, so definitely, there's no like clear cut clear boundaries in between the three, um, just to keep um, the team super flexible. Uh, if there's new requests that come from like any, any input, uh, any, any side of the team, it was very important to stay agile and flexible in terms of like pretty much anyone understands what, what is our stack. How, and it's very important for us that engineers understand what the stakeholders want, because at the end, you're not just someone extracting data and putting it in a database. If you understand why you're doing it, um, the quality of your product will be a lot better after this. Um, new mentality. So first, we wanted to get a new mentality, then you need the advocates for it, and now you actually have the people that can roll it out in the company. Um, so having the people that can like, start working with data and give some output, um, suddenly your stakeholders start seeing um, results. And they're like, oh, wow, this is very interesting. And more and more people talk about the data team. They're like, ah, they're actually helpful for this. Um, they can report me like these, like, help me with these new numbers, make decisions. Um, so really, like, um, you can support this with new discoveries. Uh, so definitely, like, um, uh, rolling out the mentality once you have the team is, is a lot easier. Um, and then st stakeholders have new support from a central team instead of um, trying to come up with their numbers all the time by themselves. Uh, and then you're in a meeting and then four people have different numbers for the amount of leads that you generate per month or something like this. Um, but then uh, when this happens, I'm not going to say that it never happens, but at least you have a central team that you can fall back to and they can support you and say, okay, this is how it should be calculated. This is the dashboard that we have for this. Um, and so, so you don't go to like someone that knows actually how you could maybe calculate this in another team. Um, for sure, we want to become like a self-served data-driven company, but at the same time, if you allow people to do too much, it's not going to work as well, and you're going you're going to lose control out of your growth. Um, so having tools that we will present later help you support the actual like control that growth. You expose as much as possible data, but clean data that people understand, and there's a single place to actually get it. Um, at the same time, rolling out a new mentality, you need to ask yourself as a team, like, what is our task? Like, what are we trying to do? Um, are we just like database administrators, uh, batch job monitors? Are we just the glue that like you extract data and put it in a warehouse and, and that's it? Um, but at the end, your goal, our goal that we just decided is delivering distilled information. So yes, uh, everything I said before, you kind of have to do it, but your end, end goal of it is actually to get the, the best insights for your, your stakeholders and business, uh, business people um, and deliver like consistent quality as well. Uh, even if you have like once like a very nice number, a very nice dashboard, but if it's not maintained and it actually fails every, every week, every day, um, no one will use it and they'll fall back to their proper Excel sheet that they were used to do, uh, used to use all the time. Um, Another very important factor that helped us a lot to roll out a new mentality at Torlane was to have a top-down support. Um, can be very difficult and have a lot of friction when suddenly your data team is asking um, your, web, your platform team to track more things. 
on the website, for example, uh, your backend uh, team to say, I, I need to have events from, from this, for example. I need to extract uh, from your API. I need a team that builds an API internally, for example, if they if no one is supporting this, but it comes from the bottom or that central, that, that central team, it's, it can be very difficult. But if you have top-down support for this, it can be um, like a, a huge, um, huge gain, actually. It really helps to push through uncomfortable situations because you will make change that will slow you down. Um, but if you understand why to do it um, and what you can get at the end, very, very, very nice. And then, the next very interesting part of it. Sorry for the delay to switching the microphone, by the way. So as Kevin was saying, we revisited a lot of how we thought about data at Tourlane. Uh, essentially, originally our data stack was very much a haphazardly grown organic one. You had CSVs, cron jobs everywhere, different reports that were claiming to have the same data, but oftentimes did not. Um, this is great for getting some numbers out in, in front of people very quickly. Uh, it's very flexible and it lets you move very fast, but it doesn't allow for a maintainable environment and it doesn't allow for consistently good results and repeatable results. So how do we maintain the flexibility and the benefits of having essentially a startup mentality in our data stack without falling into a trap of just a quagmire and a mess? And so that's why we started looking at the new data stack and how we can actually deliver this kind of flexibility and still keep that speed, but yet actually have good numbers and good data and good reports. So we wanted the flexibility, of course. We wanted the scalability, not having to tune knobs, not having to constantly tweak a mapper data cluster or an HDFS name node. We also didn't want to have to worry about um, if we had to manually tweak anything to grow any part of our pipeline. Uh, at the same time, we wanted the reliability in the sense of the numbers coming up correctly and being available as well as uh, the timeliness of them, to be able to deliver them consistently at the right time. Otherwise, it's kind of useless to get the data late. Of course, we want to talk about Snowplow first, as they promised us a discount if we get this. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, they're really great. Uh, it's been really awesome because we've been able to use them to get events coming in as if we built our own event tracking pipeline. Uh, Products like Google Analytics and Segment, they allowed us to shoehorn our use cases into them and be able to figure out how users were interacting with our product. However, the aggregate type reports that we get out of them were very much like we had to work really hard to be able to get anything useful out of them. And it was more like what they wanted to show us rather than what we wanted to see. With Snowplow, we're able to take all of the data that we get as raw events and then actually analyze them and produce good usable custom reports that show the full travel request everything that goes on in a tour lane trip, from the interactions on the phone to the website to SMSs, all the way through to them going through the trip and communications afterwards. And we're able to build all this together using the events that we track from Snowplow. Jenkins is the, probably the oldest part of the software in our stack. Uh, very reliable, doesn't have a great high availability story. Uh, Nevertheless, it's still pretty simple to actually spin up a backup server so you can have something in the background that will just replace it if your Jenkins server dies. Um, the fact that it's so old is well known and just very simple and usable makes it very powerful. We're able to throw any kind of data endpoint into it and get it scheduled, get it a part of our learning process, get it monitored, get it usable. We're able to be very flexible with it. We can still just run any Python script, any API call through it, get it a part of our pipeline very quickly. Um, that just makes it super useful. <laughs> DBT is just great. It's been wonderful. Um, we're able to orchestrate its scheduled runs through Jenkins. Uh, DBT has provided us a modeling environment that essentially any member of the team, data analyst, engineer, or data scientist can contribute to the whole platform of our data. They can create temporary tables, they can create new modeling steps, they can do any sort of the transforms that need to happen to persist these reports. And this allows us to be very flexible in our workload. Engineers don't necessarily have to convert um, SQL jobs or Excel spreadsheets into MapReduce jobs. That instead can all be SQL and all the analysts and data scientists can reuse all their SQL skills as part of DBT. So it's been really powerful and you'll hear more about that tonight in the next talk. Uh, Snowflake has been a great data space for us for a single source of truth. It allows us to use uh, one data place, one data source that has 
um, all the event type data that comes in at a very low latency, as well as our more higher latency stuff, such as generated reports or human entered data. With it, there's a bit of a barrier to entry in terms of getting everything into your copy command and kind of the exact opposite of what you would do with a normal RDBMS, where instead of having all of your data jobs being loaded throughout the day so you don't hit a table lock, you have them happen all at once. You want to try to get them to come together. Uh, this is because of the parallel nature of Snowflake actually makes it more efficient to load the, the data together at the time. And because of that same parallel nature, you can have all of your analytics tools, you can have your ETLs and your BI tools all running simultaneously and not have to worry about those locks. So the query performance as well has been really fast for our workload. We use a lot of JSON types and the JSON support in Snowflake has been really fantastic for this. Looker is our BI tool of choice. It's been really powerful for the ability to have versioned reports, to be able to create very nice, pretty dashboards, and also to give our power users the ability to do more reporting on their own without having to en engage analysts. Uh, so it's been very useful. It's a very new tool to our stack, and we're really excited for using it. So this is kind of an overview of how the whole thing is put together. Um, of course, you've got left to right, so we're going to have the inputs on the left and the outputs on the right, and you can see the flow from our custom data sources and moving on to the event tracking on the left with Snowplow into dbt, where everything is modeled and processed. And then from there, you have the actual downstream consumers consuming the more distilled data and reports. This architecture allows us to engage with new data sources and new set setups and bring them into dbt and Snowflake without having to have any problems or interfere with any of the Snowplow work, as well as add new event tracking on Snowplow and have that also be combined with the existing data sources in dbt. And everybody is still able to use the processed and correctly accessed controlled data tables on the other side. There have been some trade-offs in this uh, in terms of the steep learning curve and the very... <laughs> Malfunctions, that was a trade-off. Can we, uh, all right. <laughs> If you like glitch art, that was a good example. So um, the trade-offs and the cultural shift around this have been pretty large in the sense that people have to start thinking about data from an event tracking perspective and getting all of the data in, as well as shifting from more of the older school extract transform load mentality to the extract load transform mentality. Um, this has been a higher cost than we had originally anticipated when we started to, on this journey, but the payoffs have been innumer innumerable. So it's been very nice now that we've done this. And I know that you guys probably want some pizza, but I still have to ask you, do you have any questions? <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Yeah.